Hey, mommies. Um, I guess so it's almost the end of the week. The weekend's almost here. So um, that's something that I'm excited about. And um, I wanted to talk to you moms today um, about low milk supply because it's something that um, a lot of you that have followed me and have kind of read my story and my journey with breastfeeding, um, it started like that with um, low milk supply and it was an actual low milk supply. So I wanted to talk about what is an actual low milk supply because sometimes we perceive that we have a low milk supply and that's really easy to do also when you're um, like breastfeeding and especially if you're exclusively breastfeeding because we can't measure or determine how much our baby is um, drinking, like taking milk. So it's very, very easy to become like um, anxious about it and stressed out about it. And then it kind of becomes like a vicious circle because the more stress you have, um, the less milk you're going to produce. So it becomes kind of like a, an ongoing thing, which is kind of hard to get out of. And it can especially be difficult at the beginning um, of your breastfeeding journey, because especially if it's your, um, your first time breastfeeding, because you're kind of like a little bit unsure and you're kind of treading on, you know, unknown territory. So it can be very difficult to know if your baby is taking um, the right amount of milk and how can you determine whether you have a low milk supply or not? So all these things kind of go through your head and taken into consideration too that you've just given birth. So you're just um, postpartum. So there's a lot of hormones and changes going on and the type of birth that you had can affect that also. Um, but I just kind of wanted to simplify it a little bit because it can get very confusing and like I said, very stressful. So I just wanted to bring three little things um, to your attention to kind of consider whether you have an actual low milk supply. Because another thing is, if you've had a previous experience um, of breastfeeding for the ones that are not uh, first time breastfeeding moms, then um, you can kind of think, oh, maybe the, the first time that I tried breastfeeding didn't work. Or maybe you have a history in your family that the other moms um, or relatives, you know, weren't successful with breastfeeding. So the same is going to apply to you. Or like I said, that you had a really traumatic birth. So that's going to affect you straight away. So you start to kind of like already make up your mind that you are going to have a low milk supply um, because of these things that have happened. But really, you don't have a low, low milk supply and your baby is fine and gaining weight and satisfied. But um, you keep battling with the with with you know this struggle that 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 you're trying to to, to kind of like um, feed your baby, but you are troubled by the fact that you think that you, that your baby is not having enough milk. And I think most of that also stems from the fact that, like I said at the beginning, we can't measure how much our baby is drinking, so it's completely different from like bottle feeding or um, formula feeding. But those three little things that I was talking about can make a big difference to how you start to perceive and think, okay, no, I do not have a low milk supply. I just need to maybe work in these areas. So those first things, are, the, the first thing is um, your latching, okay? So if how the baby is latching, if the baby is not latching, improper, la not latching properly, you could be making milk for like 300 babies and if that milk is not transferring out, then you're not able to feed your baby successfully and you will eventually suffer from a low milk supply. Because remember that everything with breastfeeding and your supply stems down to supply and demand. So if you are, if your baby is demanding the milk, then your body's going to be supplying the exact amount that your baby is demanding for. So if you're not getting that milk out, you're signaling to your body that um, you don't need that milk or you know, and it's going to start to decrease your milk supply. So latching is really important. And that's why it's so important those first few um, days, and especially even the first few hours of breastfeeding, that you um, can help baby latch properly as much as possible. And um, by help him to uh, latch properly, I don't mean you sticking your boob in his mouth. It's kind of helping the baby figure out how a, a correct latch is and how he's able to transfer as much milk as possible from the breast. And that brings me to the next point, which is positioning. And remember, um, positioning for a newborn is completely different to positioning uh, an older baby that is maybe three or four months. My baby just turned um, three months a couple of days ago, and he's an awesome latcher now. I mean, he could be looking around or whatever and latched on. 
So um, they can be upside down and in whatever position possible uh, when they come to like, you know, three, four, uh, five, six months, they, they don't have a problem with that. But when they're newborns, they do because their neck muscles are not developed yet. So remember, that's when they, you have all the head bobbing like this. Um, so it's very difficult for baby to control his head, especially when the weight of his head is so much and still be able to latch on properly. So it can be very frustrating for the baby. And especially if you have him in those like cradle positions, which is how we're accustomed to seeing moms um, breastfeeding their babies or like kind of the picture that we envision. And that's when babies are older. So newborn babies, you should be trying to get them to position in a, in a you could try a lot of different positions, but I find that the most comfortable positions and from a lot of experience in speaking with um, IBCLCs, um, the natural breastfeeding positions um, are kind of, or laid back breastfeeding positions, as they call them too, is when you're kind of, I'm here in a rocker right now, so when I'm kind of laying back like this, so I'm able to put the baby in this way so that there's not so much um, friction or, or fight with gravity. So in that way too, seeing as the baby's heads, you know, instead of it being like this and them having to hold their head up, they're like this, so they're going to lock in that latch better too. So positions where you're able to um, lay back and also where your baby is kind of, their tummy is like this with your tummy too, so your tummy to tummy kind of, um, is a lot more effective um, for those first few weeks while you transition and while you start to get used to breastfeeding and your baby is able to get the hang of it too. Those are the best um, positions. Also the um, side lane position. So when you're like um, um, laying on your bed and you're kind of, you're both side to side, but again, belly to belly, that's also really helpful because your baby again, is not having to lift his head. He's just, his head is resting on the bed and then he's able to just um, um, latch on a lot better too. So position is really important. And also um, frequency. A lot, we hear so many different um, versions about how often you should breastfeed your baby, you know, if it's every two hours, every three hours, every four hours. Um, the most important thing is to, first of all, learn, start to learn um, of the, every baby is different, their hunger cues. My baby, as soon as he's hungry, he's like this with his hands. So that's something that a lot of babies do, or they're like with their mouth, or um, a lot of saliva is there or they're doing noises with their tongues. Some of them start to move their heads, their hands, their feet. So you have to start to learn when your baby is hungry so that you're feeding on demand and not on a schedule. So regardless of whether it's two hours, three hours, you know, the most important thing is to uh, be feeding your baby on demand when the baby is hungry, okay? That way also it avoids all of those things about, you know, that um, you hear about, um, you know, obesity and things like that. Although that mostly tends to affect babies that are um, bottle fed, uh, whether it's with breast milk or with formula. Um, but the important thing is to breastfeed on demand. What I tend to do is um, I tend to offer the breast all day to my baby because I work from home. So I'm able to do that. And then that way he's only feeding when he's hungry and the rest of the time, you know, he's just pacifying or just chilling out there. Um, but the important thing is that I'm feeding all the time. So my breasts are being emptied um, consistently throughout the day. So you're signaling, I'm signaling, my, my baby's signaling my body to produce the milk that he needs when he needs it. So that's really important. If you tend to um, look at the, also when the duration of your breastfeeding session, I hear a lot like, oh, 10 minutes here and 10 minutes there, you know. That's not the norm for everybody because sometimes, sometimes I've had my baby when he's like, like really hungry or he's going through like a cluster feeding and he will feed in 10 minutes, like, whoa. And then there's other times where he's kind of sleepy or he's tired and it can extend to like 40, 45 minutes. So the important thing is to make sure that you don't time the feeding session. Look at your baby and see, is he satisfied? Is he, you know, at ease now? So he's already had the, the amount of milk that he needs. Um, you can usually tell that through their body language, you know, their limbs will be relaxed, maybe they'll go into a sleep, something like that, for example. So try and read your baby's body language to see if they're satisfied and you're content with what they've, um, they've had to eat. Uh, but don't time, you know, this so much on this breast, so much on this breast, it, it doesn't, it's not going to be effective that way. And then the other thing also in regards to, um, to timing, just like I said, don't try to avoid looking at a clock. 
and just watch your baby's cues. That's the most important thing um, you can do. So those are the three things that I wanted to share with you. So we talked about latching, positioning, and um, feeding schedules or feeding fre um, frequency. That's uh, the other thing that you need to take into consideration. So if you're um, good on all those things, you know, and you're kind of like following what I explained earlier, then you're good. You know, um, breastfeeding is going good. Your supply is good. And then the other way, obviously, that you're measuring, you know, what's coming in has to go out. So if you're having enough poops and peeps, then, you know, that's awesome. If the baby's gaining weight healthy also, um, that's another indication that, you know, your supply is good. So um, kind of, I know sometimes it's really hard and it was really hard for me at the beginning um, with my breastfeeding journey. And um, I didn't, I, I, I felt also sometimes um, that it, it would never improve, but my milk supply did improve because I started to do a lot of those things that um, I mentioned before, especially the, the frequency of the feedings, that changed a lot of things for me. So, and that's one that affects a lot of moms because we do have so many people telling us, oh, you shouldn't be breastfeeding your baby for that long. You know, don't sp space out what people say <clears throat> and listen to what your body is saying and to what your baby is saying. Okay, that's the most important thing. So I just wanted to share that with you because I know that it's something that affects a lot of moms. It's very troubling, very stressful, and I would not want anybody to go through what I went through. And I would like to communicate some of the things that made a difference for me because I know it can make a difference for you. And it can make a difference in the, in the sense of whether you stop breastfeeding or not today. So just wanted to share that with you moms. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.